Hey everybody and welcome to the second part of our Assassin's Creed Revelations Now playing. Once again I've got Darby McDevitt here to talk to us about Assassin's Creed Revelations multiplayer. Darby, thanks a lot for making the long trip up here to the multiplayer uh, test room. I've come all the way from the <laughs> second floor to the third. <laughs> So, uh, so we've got a, a match going on here. What type of uh, game type are we seeing? This is a new type of match called Death Match. Um, it's uh, uh, people, players of the old, um, of the Brotherhood uh, multiplayer will note that you would, as you were wandering around the world, you'd see multiple copies of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in Death Match, there's only one of you. Um, and so up to eight players, but then the rest of the world is populated by people that are not you. So. You'll, there's actually no radar you know, to help you out. You actually have to find people on, by sight. Uh, so it, it, it changes the way you play. Um, and you always have one target at a time. Uh, or or uh, actually, you know, maybe multiple times. Um, but uh, but it's, it's much more, um, you know, you have to use your, your, sort of your intuition a lot more on this. Um, because you're searching for one specific person, mm -hmm. it, it changes the dynamic of the game. Because uh, in the old game, you know, you you might see like this is uh, the trickster right here, um, our Romani character, and you if if you were looking for the trickster, you might see multiple characters, and you right. have to kind of watch the way they uh, the way they move and to determine who your target is amid all the other tricksters. But this uh, changes the game significantly because. Uh, um, you're searching for one person in a, in a sea of many. You see there, we also have the hook board in, uh, in multiplayer as well. So we ported that over from uh, the single player experience. So Brotherhood <coughs> is obviously the first game in the series to feature multiplayer. So I, I imagine a lot of that was just sort of getting a feel for you know, what people wanted out of a Assassin's Creed multiplayer experience. What was the biggest sort of takeaway point that you guys got from, uh, from Brotherhood? Uh, I think a lot of um, a lot of little mechanical things. Mm -hmm. um, if you see one of the changes we have is we call the reverse detection meter. In the in the old game, uh, you started with a high uh, score, and things you uh, did to make yourself known, your score would go down. Like okay. the, the potential points you would get from a kill would go down. We've reversed it in this, and you have a visual indicator. You see there so that you actually have to build up to a, a high point kill and see now as she starts running um, the, the meter goes down means you're going to get fewer points um, for, for a kill so you actually have to earn your way up to uh, a high score and a lot of players who are very familiar with Brotherhood's way of doing it um, you know, and, and they got really good at Brotherhood's way of doing it we're, we're now like you know we're stunned by this new uh, this, this change, and so it forces people to play a slightly different way. And we had a, you know, a big public beta where we tested out things and we learned from a lot about how players play. Um, so uh, we're always like tweaking systems, but that's one of the big takeaways is we changed that system um, to make it, especially because it's just a visual indicator of how many points you're gonna get. I think a lot of people, especially people who are new to this uh, experience, Whenever they'd kill somebody, they didn't quite know why they got the p number of points they did. This is a nice, clear, visual way of, of letting all people, right, right when you come into this game, you're like, ah, oh, I see, I, I'm, building my, I'm building my score. So it's a very clear way of telling you how, much, how many points you're going to get for a specific kill. See, as always, running makes you very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep it subtle. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there you go. Another thing we uh, we have brought into this is the uh, incredible amount of customization. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, we know that people fall in love with certain multiplayer characters, but um, that people want to kind of put their own their own spin on it. So we have an incredible amount of customization in this. You can logos for the back of your outfit, changing up the colors and styles of the outfits. Uh, changing up the weapons that you have, and then of course all the uh, special abilities that you eventually get. Um, so there's just a, a far greater amount of customization. So that, um, which which in a game like this would be 
um, and, and deathmatch would be cool because now, you, because you're just one character among all these others, people are going to really notice that you know your customizations a lot more. You're going to stand out. One thing I should point out too about the deathmatch is that because there's no radar, mm -hmm. uh, we actually use much smaller chunks of our larger maps. Okay. So this is you see all these memory walls here. This is because this is really just a very small part, probably like a fourth of the the actual map, maybe even smaller. But that keeps the action really tightly contained, um, so that you're not wandering around a huge map looking for uh, looking for your target. So we have here. Is it for the deacon? <laughs> the deacon thought he could get away by sitting on a bench. <laughs> and insult to injury. Yeah. Oh, look at this. It's a party over here. So uh, this map that we're seeing here, how does this compare to some of the other maps on offer? Uh, well, this one's... Uh, I mean, we have... Um, a number of the maps have different day and night cycles. Um, um, it's... Uh, I'm not actually sure which map this is. Because um, this one's new to me. I remember uh, uh, playing on Galata and uh, and uh, a couple of the other maps. But this one, I've not seen this one before. Um, this one has got more of a, 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 a I think, a, I'm trying to guess from the architecture, <laughs> a Byzantine feel. Maybe we got these, we got these pointed arches. That's <laughs> Is it obvious who's an assassin right now? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Party on the rooftop. <laughs> it's going to be a bloodbath up there. <laughs> and can you give us a sense of some of the other character types uh, there are? Yeah, well, w one of the things you'll notice. Um, and it actually feeds into a game like Deathmatch, is that a lot of the character designs in this are, are much less um, um, obvious, mm -hmm. right? The, the Brotherhood like, had big characters that had a very obvious function, like there was the barber, right. and, the, you know, and they were very big and obvious and cool. Um, we still made these cool, stylish characters, but we wanted them to be a little bit, um, not, not to be so flashy, because in a game like this, it's not fair if one person gets to pick the character that blends in really well, oh, okay. and another one gets like the huge flashy character. Mm -hmm. You you'll be able to pick that one out in the crowd every single time. Um, and in a deathmatch mode, where you are s solely reliant on um, finding that one person, a character who had looked like looked like a peacock, you know, whatever, would would always be killed and always be spotted from far across the map. Whereas um, you know, somebody who was dressed down would blend in better. So there'd be this natural <coughs> disadvantage. So we wanted to, you know, kind of have to keep the realism and the uh, subtlety of a lot of the characters. The other reason is that at least nine of these characters um, are in our single player game. Oh, this okay. is uh, the trickster, and she actually plays a role in the single player experience as well um, in one of our Master Assassin missions. So you actually get to know her slightly. Um, get to know her story as a, as a Templar. Mm -hmm. um, all, these, all these characters are Templars. So, um, so we really get to explore their backstory. Um, and that's another reason why you know, we want them to blend into the, the time period in the, the world of Constantinople and the Ottoman Empire in the, fifth, 15th, or the 16th century. So it all feels like one world. I love it when you're just walking around and you just see a body fall yeah. down in front of you. Yeah, ain't no thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous back in history. I These two knights chatting <laughs> peacefully. Yeah, they just they can't be bothered. Yeah, in the blind in. Um, and so there's also, of course, the abilities. This is a this is a s early in the game, right? Mm -hmm. So we haven't unlocked uh, the uh, special abilities, but we have all those kind of great abilities that Brotherhood had and, and more, um, you know, like blending where you can, you can uh, activate one and you'll, you'll uh, for say a brief 30 seconds, you'll, your character model will change so that you can blend in, you know, and in a game like Deathmatch, you know, that would be incredibly useful, right? Because people are looking for one version of you mm -hmm. and now you're not that version of you anymore. So a very easy way to hide. But it doesn't last long, <laughs> and you have to make sure you don't uh, activate it in the middle of a courtyard. Right. <laughs> Massacre. Which is just about 
<laughs> Seven. Hey, I call that not last place. No. That's always a victory for me when I'm playing. We're all winners. <laughs> this is a uh, Lysistrata, named after the uh, um, named after the the play by Aristophanes. Um, she's uh, you know obviously wearing a sort of a more of a Greek traditional Avoid Greek dress. In our uh, in our uh, world, she's an actress, which. The, the boundary between actress and courtesan in those days was sort of uh, porous. <laughs> um, but she also uh, plays a part in the single player game. Um, and uh, so yeah, it's a, I think it'll be really quite fun for players to like, get deeper and deeper into the, a lot, especially the side missions, and, uh, and really discover who these characters are. We actually gave them. Uh, Brotherhood had a lot of the characters in it, but they didn't have much of a, a vocal presence, but uh, each one of them have a, the infamous uh, assassin death room or white room soliloquy, you know, where they, they give a little speech uh, you know, about what their intentions were. And so we brought that back for this because I wanted to make sure that players knew who, what their backstory was and why they, why they did what they did. So this is a... Uh, Galata map. Um, if you see off in the distance there, we uh, have some minarets and that's the uh, mainland of Constantinople. Um, this is uh, um, an area of town that would be equivalent to the, the, the area that we just played through in the single player mission. Mm -hmm. um, so at some point you know, we may see Galata Tower in the background, although this is I think the uh, easternmost side of the, of the district. So. Um, it's not, we might not see it, but uh, this is in Constantinople. And again, I played a, during our open beta, I, uh, I played a lot of uh, um, capture, uh, artifact assault mm -hmm. uh, on this map, and this is a really good, good map for that, but this again is just a tiny chunk of a much larger map. Okay. And it gives you a good, good sense of the visual variety of the different map types because yep. that last one, much different color palette. Yep, yep. This one's really nice and warm. Still a good chance of getting murdered in the streets, though. So <laughs> yeah. you gotta watch out. Yeah. And then kick in the head. The, uh, yeah, and you'll notice the, the, like, uh, the variety of weapons that different people have. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you choose different weapons, um, as, you, as you get better at the game, as you uh, kill more people, um, you'll get you'll get credits within the game and then you can okay. spend those on uh, purchasing new weapons and those ne new weapons will then come with new uh, animations so um, so you know it sort of extend the life of your uh, extend the life of a uh, you know there's always something new to see right you know, like as you as you buy a weapon you'll be wowed and amazed by the uh, Brutality of the kills. <laughs> we see here this uh, our target right now is is our uh, the Count or Vlad the Impaler, um, and Vlad the Impaler is has, plays a large part in Ottoman history. Um, he's dead by the time our single player campaign happens, but only by a few decades. So we have a we have a small side missions and, and uh, some versions of our game where you actually go into Vlad the Impaler's uh, tomb. You know, and he was he's the he's where Dracula the whole myth of Dracula came from um, he was killed by the Ottoman Empire in uh, 1485 just north of the, the Romania what's modern-day Romania was right on the border the northern border of the Ottoman Empire and that's that's kind of why Vlad the Impaler was the way he was as he was always trying to defend him, his people against the Ottomans who were pushing forward so we uh, we like that that small bit of detail, and we, uh, oh, here's a contested kill. Honorable death. Honorable death. So yeah, that's another um, new tiny little feature. Is I, th in, I think in Brotherhood, a lot of people would feel like, I saw my killer coming, mm -hmm. but he beat me at the button, and I feel like a, a little cheap, because I saw him coming, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes away, and I just beat him, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a rock, paper, scissors. Like, right. he just pushed Massacre. the button before me. Now we have this tiny little window that if you, uh, if you s try to stun your killer bef as he's killing you, you have a tiny bit of, of leeway to actually do a, an honorable death, uh, or on the killer's side, it'd be a contested kill. So um, they'll like, you know, they won't go down without a fight. 
and then you get even though you died you still get some points for that um, for at least saying hey I was you know clever enough to spot them before they killed me um, so it adds a little bit more variety and see now that was a sneaky kill. <laughs> And there's the deacon. That's the, the deacon. He's also in our single player Massacre. campaign. And then there's a, what's his name? Um, Cyril of Rhodes. Oh, okay. Yes, he's an uh, he's an Orthodox. Uh, he's a he's a rogue Orthodox deacon. Huh. So we've seen a, a pretty good amount of the multiplayer here, uh, Darby. Before we let you go, are there any other? general bits of strategy for multiplayer su success that you can recommend? Uh, stay off the roofs. Stay off the roofs? <laughs> <laughs> unless, you, unless you're going to travel a long distance to find oh, okay. your target. But, uh, it's there's a dead a, giveaway when you're up there? It's a dead giveaway when you're, when you're in a game that's, yeah, there's that a guy up there. there. <laughs> See, you, you spot them right away. <laughs> it's, a, you know, it's a social stealth game. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it kind of happens in stages where you're trying to sneak around on the ground. If you are spotted, though, then you take, you know, t to the rooftops to get away. Use these chase breakers. We have these gates that shut right after you go through them. You know, if you run through them, they'll shut behind you. That allows you to... Oh, look at this. We gotta, we gotta watch this. this Ooh. Oh. No, no. It's on. Uh, uh. <laughs> I think you went through... No. Oh. That's what they call a successful Got evasion. Yep. <laughs> oh, wait, Whoa, no! no. Stun! <laughs> That's the old run around the corner and then wait trick. <laughs> pretty, pretty successful knocked strategy. Your, knocked your fillings out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think, uh, I think a, it's a, a tendency, because mm -hmm. the single player encourages all kinds of crazy free running, um, it's a tendency for beginners in this game to you know, take to the rooftops and run around and try to jump on people. But you will get you will get killed uh, instantly by good players if you are really obvious about yourself. So you really do have to pull it back. Okay. You know, remain secretive. Oh, that's always a good sign. <laughs> Just raining bodies. That happened to me on the way to work today. <laughs> Just a body fell in the street. Montreal is a dangerous city. <coughs> watch yeah. out. And we do prototyping in the street. <laughs> it's called real life QA testing. <laughs> Leave the body there in the <laughs> fountain. I see right here. That guy got a contested kill, mm -hmm. so even though he was able to kill his target, there was a contested kill, and he walks away from that a bit stunned, so he's got about five seconds of, like, see that? Oh, Trying to okay. shake it off, like, you know, and that, uh, that slows you down, be and because your killer might be right behind you, mm -hmm. so you might have a successful kill, but if it was contested, it leaves you vulnerable for about five seconds. So, you know, a lot of little tightly integrated systems. Okay. All right, Darby, well, thanks a lot for taking the time to yeah. show us uh, the, uh, the multiplayer portion of Assassin's Creed Revelation. Guys, if you haven't already watched our single player now playing, make sure to give that a watch because that is very entertaining. Darby, thanks, thanks a lot. lot. Thanks it's for coming. Pleasure. Yeah. All right, everybody, thanks for watching.